morning committee. This is the uh, Monday morning committee of the House Appropriations Committee. And um, it is already September 21st, which I just find unbelievable how this month is flying by. Uh, we first have on our agenda, we have um, Sarah Truckel from DCF. We have uh, Sean Brown, the commissioner of DCF. And we also have uh, Sarah Clark, uh, the CFO for AHS with us today. Our committee wanted to uh, hear a little more uh, about the status of funding for the parent-child centers. And um, I understand there's some work that is being done. And uh, many people have reached out to different members in the committee uh, regarding getting some support and, and um, what that support is going to look like um, through DCF. And the amount that we passed out of the house, the 3.9 million back in June, uh, later morphed into a larger $12 million package uh, that certain uh, funding priorities uh, was going to be taken from. And so we just need an update of where we are on that and, um, and plans for um, some support if needed to the parent-child centers. So welcome Commissioner Brown and um, Sarah and Sarah, thank you for joining us today. So I think you've been, there's been lots of conversations, lots of emails uh, going around. And Sean, do you wanna start or Kimberly, did you have anything you wanted to add before um, the commissioner uh, jumped in? Uh, no, I'll save a couple questions for later, but thank you, Madam Chair. So Commissioner Brown, welcome. And would you, do you um, just want to give us an overview of where we are and what you see the, the issues are and how we can possibly resolve them? Sure, uh, good morning. Um, and for the record, this is uh, Sean Brown, the commissioner for the Department for Children and Families. Um, yes, so we, um, the legislature did allocate $12 million um, for three different areas for providers um, in response to COVID. And one area was for parent child centers for their ongoing operations. Um, and when we did an application process to award those funds, um, and we worked with the state's consultants and our attorneys to identify what would be or would not be allowable expenses that were submitted. And based on that, we, we started to move forward and make awards. Um, and then some concern was raised after some testimony in House Human Services um, regarding whether some of the decisions being made of what was eligible or not for reimbursement based on other areas of uh, what is happening in state government and other areas with the COVID relief funds. Um, we stepped back and met with our consultant and reviewed some of the expenses um, that the parent-child center submitted to, to reevaluate whether they were reimbursable. Um, and so that work went on through last week and through Friday. Um, I can share with the committee that the parent-child centers had uh, submitted um, actual uh, costs and expenses up through August and then future expected costs through, uh, from August into October. Combined, those totaled almost $967,000. Um, we did notify the parent child centers of, of, of uh, their awards for uh, funds up through August. And then we were gonna notify them separately of their future anticipated expenses. I think combined, we will be able to reimburse almost all of that $967,000 to the parent child centers. Um, uh, several of them submitted appeals, which are a part of the process and we're reviewing those now and we believe that we'll be able to um, resolve those. Um, and then also we'll be sending out notices of their anticipated expenses of fully funding them as requested. So my, my first question is the anticipated, anticipated expenses from August through October, but what about um, October through December? Will those be included or? Well, mo um, most of those expenses that they submitted uh, up through anticipated were for uh, purchases of like appliances and then some uh, building um, capital expenses. And so while those projects will be ongoing, we just need them to submit the, the reimbursements um, through the end of October so we can get those funds out, out the door and issued and spent before the end of December. 
this, okay. those okay. capital projects need to be online before the end of December to be reimbursable. Okay. So we just need, it's a very quick time frame. Yep, thank you. I, I, I now understand that piece of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, um, are there questions? Uh, do we have Mary Beth Redmond? Uh, welcome, Mary Beth. You're here from the Human Services Committee. So if you have questions or need clarification, make sure that um, you know just raise your blue hand or flag me down somehow. Are there any thoughts for, for the commissioner at this point? The concern was that the initial award uh, that they received, Sean, was it 130,000? Approximately, yes. 130,000 out of uh, almost a million dollars worth of requests. But we've heard from the commissioner that it appears that through the appeals process and understanding some of the, um, some of the um, more detail and what the asks are that they hope to get the nearly the full amount uh, out the door. Uh, Mary. Thank you. Um, so I understand what has happened to date. I'm thinking that if I were a parent child center and had been turned down, that I might not now apply for the same thing that maybe is now eligible under kind of the current understanding. So are you letting the PCCs know of, you know, that there is an opportunity that things that had been turned down are now eligible? Yeah, we're notifying the PCCs this week that, um, you know, we had given indication in the initial award letters for the incurred expenses through August that much of the capital expenses under the initial guidance we received would not be eligible. And so we're sending out notices this, uh, hopefully today, uh, for those uh, anticipated expenses that those are now eligible and they can expend those funds and submit the reimbursement this fall, later this fall for those costs. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions? Uh, Diane and then Marty? Thank you. I thought I'd be in a long queue. Thank you. Thank you for coming in this morning. Um, so it's one of the reasons why we were like we're here today is because the parent child centers are such a critical support system within, you know, across the state. Um, and especially in today's environment. I'm, I'm wondering, um, Commissioner, are we is the agency working with or, or um, the PC the with the parent child centers to get a deeper understanding of you know, what we've funded here, what you're going to be able to fund here is also just a tip of the iceberg of, of a narrow scope of what they actually have needs for. And underlining all of that, there is a lot more going on. I know that it's a lot of money and you're doing, we're doing, I'm very pleased to hear that this is gonna get out the door, but are we at the same time while you're working with them, getting a better and deeper understanding of the other issues that are not being addressed because COVID is so narrow. Does that make sense? Yes, we, uh, in working with them, we have um, begun that conversation with them and asked if there are additional um, losses or uh, expenses that they incurred that might or not have been initially looked at here. So we get an understanding of what those look like, what those losses or expenses look like. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Diane. Marty? Yes, I, I just wanted to clarify that you indicated that certainly some of that now it has been judged that some of the capital expenses that people were asking for, such as appliances and that sort of thing, would now be eligible. But indeed, instead, it that PCCs still need to expend those funds and then ask for reimbursement. Is that correct? That is correct. This is a reimbursement. Uh, but will this letter that, that you? But we uh, we are letting them know that it okay. uh, based on what they submitted for information. If they make those expenses, they will be reimbursement, and we're committed to turning those payments around as quickly as possible when they submit for their reimbursement. Um, once they make those purchases. Okay. 
Okay. I, I understand from a fiscal point of view, it's, it's necessary that you wait for justification of the expense before you reimburse it. But the concern, of course, was the getting the capital funds in order to do some of those things first. But if you can assure them that the, the, uh, those requests are legitimate and will be reimbursed promptly, I think they will be able to manage. Thank you for making those changes or clarifying those issues. Marty, uh, Mary Beth. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Representative Feltis really um, began kind of my um, initial inquiry, and that is um, how quick, you know, as far as reimbursements, are we talking like days? I mean, one of the things that I heard overwhelmingly was the time frame, and knowing that you you are approved to spend this quickly, um, do you feel like you'll be able to turn those around within days? I mean, is that that the hope? I, you know, I'm not a fi the financial person, so I'll defer to uh, our chief financial officer, Sarah Truckle, to give you an, in, uh, a little background of how the agency and the department uh, uh, processes its invoices and makes payments. Happy to do so. So Sarah Truckle, uh, DCF financial director for the record. So this award will be issued on a based on their grant applications for their anticipated expenses. So it'll have an amount and then it'll be paid on a reimbursement based basis based on their invoices, similar to how we pay um, other grants that we have within the department, but also grants that we have within the parent child centers. We typically process payments um, within a couple weeks. That's our typical turnaround. So we have to receive an approval from the grant manager and then the accounts payable team processes. Uh, we haven't seen a significant um, delay in any invoices being processed with COVID and would anticipate that this would take the same uh, payment process. So for uh, some context with our child care stabilization payments, we were issuing payments um, within 10 to 14 days of those invoices being submitted. Thank you. And, and just one more question um, relative to, um, first, I, I just want to say I'm really grateful for this review um, and, and this change in decision. And I'm wondering if in your um, consultations with the consultant, if in the end there will be any um, expenses that it was deemed you cannot pay, like is there anything left out of this that um, you definitively determine, no, we can't cover that? At, at this point, you know, there, um, we hope to cover the vast overwhelming majority. And my goal is, is um, to try to cover it all. So at this point, we don't anticipate um, there being a huge discrepancy from what they've requested to what we're reimbursing at this point. We're continuing on those areas um, under where they've appealed the initial grants, where there's still where we need some additional information, we're hoping that additional information allows us to move forward and, and uh, make payments. Thank you, Kimberly. Yeah, um, thank you. So, uh, if folks are done with the PCCs, I just want to echo thanks to everyone for raising the issues and for uh, working on them. And, and I know it's been a quick turnaround. The, the shift that I want to make now is looking at that $12 million package. And my recollection is that had some summer grants, summer camps in it. It had the PCCs, but it also had the CIS funding. And I would welcome any update on what has happened in terms of those dollars. Yes. Um... You know, we are in the process of awarding those funds out. Um, there was only a few cost out of the um, uh, the amount that they requested. Um, I don't have that exact number, but um, there was some costs that were um, requested through the CIS that we believe were mistakenly applied for um, by a parent child center and should have been included in their uh, PCC request because um, the CIS providing grant was for uh, the provision of telehealth and costs and expenses there. And so um, we've covered almost 100% of those costs and we're looking at moving the few expenses there that are not tied to telehealth that were submitted by a PCC and putting those in and making 
sure that um, uh, following up with that provider to make sure they understood that that was for telehealth and if those were other costs that were reimbursable through the other means that, that we will uh, move them over to that if, they're, if that works for them, that provider. Um, great, um, thank you. And my follow-up question, and then this sort of highlights it, is I was looking through uh, Act 136 and I noticed there were two reporting provisions. One was sort of, a, I think it was October 1 and I forget the second date and it applied to the whole bill, but in terms of a January 15th report back of where all the dollars land ultimately, that seemed to only apply to the healthcare stabilization section. And just based on our back and forth right now, I'm thinking that um, it might be helpful to have that same sort of report back in January that would just let us know where the dollars landed within that $12 million package versus only the healthcare stabilization. And in part, the reason I raise it, I think that will better inform us when we head into fiscal year 22, knowing where resources from the prior year, including CRF resources, have landed. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, given um, the intent of the legislature, it was our um, belief, and it is our belief, that uh, we want to provide an update or a report to the legislature where, where we spent these funds as well as the healthcare stabilization funds. Great, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kimberly, for bringing, bringing up that extension, you know, the extended report back so that we get the full view. Um, if this is being added to the budget, Kimberly, and I think it would be helpful to DCF that it's not one of those formal report backs where they have to do all the jargon in, in a big long report, but they actually just come in and they report back on the information to the committees of jurisdiction. And so Ledge Council has that type of language that makes it, we get all the information, but it's, it's an informal report and not one of the long, um, longer, more time consuming reports. Would that be helpful, John? That, that type of report sure. back yeah. of a- Yeah, we're, we're happy to report back in any mechanism that, that the legislature would like to receive it. So we're more than happy to come in and provide additional uh, testimony in January uh, on the final uh, result of, of these funds and how they were spent. Thank yeah, I think I, I think that would be helpful just because as you highlighted earlier, Madam Chair, we started out with some allocations in the house that were far more specific. And because everything was melded, I think there's been some sentiment on the part of members of trying to follow through where things landed um, in greater de detail than just a $12 million overview. So thank and Kimberly, you. you will you will work on that language. Uh, yes. Thank, thank you. you. Are there any other uh, questions or comments or thoughts for um, any of the group that's here with us today from DCF? Uh, Dave? Yes, thank you. Um, I had, uh, Madam Chair, my questions are not directly related to CRF, but I thought it looks like we have enough time. Uh, just two quick questions, if I may, related okay. to the uh, child world. Absolutely. Um, Sean, I understand that the, uh, the director of uh, CIS is uh, leaving. Do you, do you plan to refill that position? Assuming uh, yes, you're granted permission? Yes. Yes, we do plan to fill that position. Great. Thank you. Um, and could you briefly, I've had a couple of constituents contact me about the uh, SAG process, special accommodations grants. Could you just briefly describe uh, to us how, how that works, please? Um, I'm going to defer to Sarah Truckle to, to uh, explain those in a little more detail. She has a little bit deeper knowledge of those than I do. Thank you. Happy to Thank give you, uh, some high level context. Um, so Sarah Truckle, financial director for the record, um, the special accommodation grants have an application process which um, the provider of a childcare program may apply for funds on behalf of an eligible um, 
a child, that application process is done in consultation with the child's parent or guardian and is for a specific purpose, most often for one-on-one um, -on -one assistance during a child care setting to support that child during the time that they receive care in the child care setting um, and to support their learning. We review those applications based on the funding that we have available and make awards based on a set amount of time frame. Um, so sometimes those awards are made for three months, sometimes they're made for six months. Um, and then the provider receives funds to typically hire that additional um, person in the classroom to work with that child. Is that answer your question, Representative Yakubov? So it's a grant process. It's, it's it, Yes, it's not a a bid process. It's, uh, it's Sean has these kinds of needs and and uh, we'd like X amount of dollars to address them. So it's a grant. It's a, it's an application process. Yes. So it's still um, it's not it's an application process of which there's criteria that's reviewed to determine um, the needs, the amount of funding available and then an ultimate allocation. Um, so they, they do go through a process which is reviewed by the Children's Integrated Service um, Program Manager. And I do believe the director also reviews each one of those applications to determine the appropriate award and level of need based on the application criteria. Thank you, Sarah, I appreciate that. Happy to help. Thank Are you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Dave. Are there any final questions? Um, that anyone would like to ask. Mary Beth, anything else from your committee that you'd like clarification at this time? I, I think we're good. I'm delighted with the news. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you for, for coming in. It just makes communication so much easier when we're all working as a team. And thank you, um, uh, Sean and Sarah and Sarah for, for coming in and, and, and bringing this information because the, the uh, emails that we've been receiving have been very concerning and that this is working out and you can address these needs is, as Mary Beth said, is excellent news and we're happy to receive it. So we are going to move on to the budget and um, you're more than welcome to stay <laughs> a busy day and, and need to, uh, and, and need to uh, get back to your own work, but thank you for coming. Thank in. you, thank you for having us. Okay. Teresa and Maria, are we here? On Friday, we did quite a bit of work. We, um, on Thursday and Friday, we did a, some work on the web report and then we got through a, about a quarter of the language. I don't even know if we got through a whole quarter of the language, but then there was additional language that was passed on Friday that is not included in our original packet. And Teresa, that is all posted now. Is that correct? Yeah, I just put the um, I just put four documents up. Um, there's the uh, restatement of the House and Senate general fund differences, which you got this morning. The language differences, which you got this morning in the lists. And uh, I just did uh, CRF total side by side and the annotated, and I'll send you the last two right now. And so um, my question is that open up the Senate language. Is this all the new language from page one to the end, or is this just the additional language? Um, my print. It's not. It's not. I can't download it, Teresa. I can't open the attachment for some reason. That's weird. It's only like a one pager. Okay. I, yep. I wasn't, nothing happened. It's just a PDF. So let me, uh, I sent it to you in a PDF form this morning, the whole it's committee. Always open. Yeah. Senate language. It's not, oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, and that includes, oh, so it's a one pager and I may print it, oh no, it's a couple pages. And uh, it includes all the new pieces that we don't have if we had printed off the, the language from Thursday, right? Yeah, it's the comparison, yeah. The side-by-side okay. -side, or differences, I should say. Differences. So my question is, uh, to Maria, we're, we're going to continue. We left off on page uh, 19 of the language. Um, I want to keep working through that language as quickly as we can as a committee. 
where, how um, will you just note where there's new language or do you have it already in addition? Is it already added to your language pieces? That's my question I'm trying to spit out. So um, I, it's not in the language that I um, had on Friday, but I will try to pay attention and insert it where it needs to go. Um, so we were used. We were using the annotated, I believe, right? Yes, we were. OK. So what I would like to do then, um, Maria, I'd like to continue with the document we started with. And if we can just note where there's additional language and then address that additional language when we have those copies in front of us. We've got enough language for us to address today. Um, do you happen to offhand, is there any additional language in the first um, sections that we've gone through that, that we just need to just put a line with a red mark saying more language coming. We've done section 8100 through, uh, we left off at B1102. Is there anything that we need to add that was that we haven't talked about so far? Um, so I, I just can't answer that. I have to look at the language. So Teresa, you said that you sent it earlier, the, the new floor amendments. So, so let, let's just skip that then, Maria, and we'll come back to all those floor amendments from Friday. Let's just continue okay. with the we have. It's on so, both websites as well. Kitty, if I might, this is where like I, I look at a document. The earlier annotated version was 161 pages. This one's 178. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's more just, just differences than that, but that's my initial clue that this is the final. Yes, it would. I actually got a, a revise this morning. From oh, so, okay. That's what I'm asking. So Maria, you are going to be working off the new list. Thank you, Diane, for looking at those page numbers. So this is going to include all the new language. And unfortunately, I don't, I don't have a copier that works as long as could, and I don't really want to do 200 more pages. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So. Yeah, okay, th that's good. This is where we left off. Um, I think that your committee had, we've gone through um, B and we were starting at business economic assistance and unemployment stimulus. So my only thing I wanna go back to Maria, if there's new language in those first 19 pages that, that we've missed, but it looks like, it looks like these page numbers, oh, well, I don't know if it's gonna line up exactly. Okay, we'll go back and see if there's something we missed in the earlier section. Yeah, I mean, I can do that. I just, um, yeah. Okay, so let, let's do what you just said. <laughs> okay. okay, all let's right. Continue on with B1102. Yeah, page, okay. Page 19 for everybody, just so we're all know where we are. Yeah. So, Okay, so B1102 is the section that addresses the new language that, I mean, the new money that was added by the, um, for the 85,000 for the commerce uh, CRF funds. And you'll see some of the, um, I just got to turn my phone off. It's making noise, sorry. Um, anyway, so that number, the 143,700, what they've done is they've under they've gone to the underlying bill, the um, actually results 137 and amended that bill to reflect the new money that's been added. So that 143,700 is an addition of um, 61,700,000. And I think this is worthy of a, like just a little note to self. Like if you wanna write in the margins, there's four places where we will see the total of 85 million added. And this is one of them. So this is the 61 million 700. And then we're gonna come upon a 4 million for restart Vermont. Um, and then there's gonna be a 2.3 million for Vermont State College workforce training. And then we're gonna come upon, so Teresa, we'll just slowly walk through it, but we're gonna also come upon a 17 million for the unemployment insurance supplemental benefit. So. Um, I just want you to have a heads up that those numbers are included in these documents that we're going through. Um, uh, just a second, uh, Maria, for, for the committee. When, 
when the bill passed out of the house, when the bill passed out of the house, the Commerce Committee came in and they had, I think, $88 million going, they had a total, both have a total of 100 million. The house position was 88 million uh, to go into the business sector for recovery grants. And then the other 12 was divided into three ways, 5 million for the ski areas, 3 million for the Vermont State Colleges, and then the last 5 million, I need a refresher on Maria, do you remember, or, or um, Linda, I'm sure you remember. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not. The, does anyone remember the last five? It was five. Well, um, when you, can I just ask you? When I look at our our bill, that that number which is now here that they're reflecting is 143. When it left the house, it was 170. But they don't they don't show that because I think they just took it all down and just worked from the original or something. Both, both. Uh, but anyway, the house version was 170, 170. They both spend the same amount of money. It's how we spend mm -hmm. just different ways. And the, I think the fourth amount was the restart for four million, right? Yeah, that yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it was eighty-eight million all going out to uh, recovery grants to businesses, and then the other twelve was divided between five for the ski areas, four for restart for mounds, and three to the Vermont. Program. And so you're going to see it spread out. Kitty, I can't hear you. You can't hear me. Uh, am I weak? Should I shut off the video? Is that is that better? No, I, I think you just need to be closer. Let me see if my volume may be way down. I apologize. And somebody is rustling papers near yeah. the microphone. That may be you, Kitty. No, I haven't moved any. Okay. Um, Kitty, I'm thinking if we flip back a couple of pages, we, we can see just to refresh where we have ended up on um, page 17. Let's see, page 17. Okay, there. Um, you'll see there we had um, part of this. Let's see. Um, ay, ay, ay. So the, this at the bottom of the page is the $5 million that the House had put in for the ski areas. And the Senate just... Um, they struck that language because the ski areas are gonna be part of the overall grant process. They're gonna go through the process just like every other business. So they don't have a special carve out. They are still eligible, of course, for these grants. It's just not as a separate carve out. So that's where the 5 million that you just mentioned um, regarding the house lives or did live. Um, okay, and then, then on page, 18, the next page, um, you'll see, yeah, there at the top, you see the 4 million, the Restart Vermont, and that is, I believe, the same as the House. Um, there was a little bit of language that was added by the Senate, and you can see that in green. Um, but this is part of the $85 million that the Senate has added. The Senate did a little bit differently. They did $85 million um, added to the bill, and then there's a $15 million um, uh, contingent appropriation for a total of $100 million. Um, okay, and then on number 16. Wait, wait, so the, the UI piece is totally different money then? The, the 17 million is totally different money outside the 100 million? No, no, it's in the, it's in the money. It's in part of the 85 million. It's, um, there's four okay. pieces. There's four pieces and they add up to 85 million. It's 4 million for Restart Vermont. Two, this is from the Senate perspective. 2.3 million for the Vermont State College workforce training. 61.7 million for business grants and 17 million for the UI supplement. And if you add those together, you get 85 million. And then where's the last 15? So we'll see that language. Um, it's coming up. It's um, it's part of this giant package that you have in front of you, and I will definitely flag it. Um, uh, oh, here it is. I'm sorry. It's on page 
24, section B is in boy 1102.2. It's called Contingent Business Grants CRF Appropriation. There you go. Yep, that's it. Uh, okay, that's what they did to, um, they, they did contingency of the 15 million and that would, that would help their number of 61.7 to get it closer to the, the 88 million. Um, yeah, and so the, I, yeah, that's right. And the idea is that if there's any money left over from the allocation to the administration and the allocation, the 150 CRF, there's um, the joint fiscal committee um, is allocating, if there's anything left over or if we get um, FEMA money or monies that will replace some of those dollars, 15 million of those dollars will go to this purpose. And so for this committee and for Linda, um, um, we will pull in uh, Mike Marcotte in his committee because uh, they're, they're, they're very similar. They both have business grants, they both have uh, Restart Vermont, and they both have BSC. The big changes are the lesser amount in the business grants on the Senate side and adding 17 million to the UI. Um, and so that, that's just going to be a conversation in progress with us and with the Committee of Jurisdiction. Okay, any questions from any members on how the, the difference between the $100 million that went out um, in commerce? Is everyone uh, pretty clear on that? I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty clear on it and I'm glad I put some mental time, although it was thick going through over the weekend to try to get my head wrapped around it. And I'm sure that I'm still missing a lot of pieces. But so my question is, cause I was trying to tag up things that we had in our CRF bill with where they moved and, and Maria did a good job of showing us where those other pieces moved. But I think coming up and, and where does the 1.5 for the CUDs fall oh. in? We're going to wait. We'll I get to that. Okay. Yep, I don't want to start jumping around. That's not. That's not a part of the economic move, right? No. no okay. No. Okay. Um, Marty. Yes, I I do have a bit of a concern with what the Senate did because it looks to me as if the fifteen million that they're adding in to make up the total of 100 is contingent money, assuming it would come back from the JFC, as opposed to being directly 15 million that they're committed to do, not just presuming that something's gonna come back. Right. So that does concern me a bit that it cuts into the pot that JFC might have to take care of some last minute things that need to be taken care of. Yep, it, it is concerning, and it's it's concerning that it 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 cuts into the JFC pot, but it also cuts into the amount going out to support Vermont businesses that are struggling, um, and so that's right what, immediately. Yeah, right. so we'll have to, you know, that will be a conversation between uh, our committee and their committee to see where we land, but also uh, making sure that the, the priorities from Commerce um, that Mike is working through these. Uh, with us and and through their the adjacent committee on the Senate side, um, we're close, but we're far apart at the same time in in some of those areas. The themes are similar. Money is the problem, and the contingent the word contingent is is uh, going to be an issue. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll 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 echo that. I know you guys will be going in the committee of conference, but it seems like that 15 million that we we actually were comfortable because of the advice that we were given by JFO that this was a very high probability from FEMA and response that it might actually be more than than the 15 and that 15 was a conservative use that we used straight up went forward with. So I find that the construct that the Senate is proposing here just complicates that a whole lot, you know, as we approach December for businesses being able to apply and for the agency to be working with people. So, All right, so we know where the issues are. I yeah. just wanna keep working through this language. We're not going to resolve them now, but also we need to ask um, the Joint Fiscal Office for updates where we are with, uh, with the CRF dollars and the FEMA dollars because those are changing you know, almost daily too. And, and so it, it changed significantly from when it left the House to the Senate, it's going to change 
in our time where we're working out the differences as well. And then it's going to continue changing all the way to December 20th. Um, and so, but that, that, those are the pieces that are on the table. And depending on the money that's available and the priorities, um, we'll sort through how the $100 million looks um, in the end. Okay, are we ready to move on? We didn't solve it, but we're aware. That's all I'm trying to uh, do at this point. What page are we on? Uh, 20. Okay, so, so yeah, page 20 also um, refers to the additional 61,700,000. And just as a reminder, the uh, Senate had this 5 million for ski areas. They're gonna compete against this pot of money. They're gonna compete for their funds in this pot of money. In the, okay. in the, in the 117, right? Yes. So the yes. areas competes here, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so here we go. We're going to um, move a few pages. There's language changes. Um, there's uh, on page 22, there's a lot of language about process, and um, you can read through that. That's uh, regarding these grants. Um, so, A says adopt the process, procedures, and guidelines. Then um, then, you know, you can, I don't know if you want me to go through this, you can submit, inf they need to submit information to business so businesses know oh, how to apply. For oh, you move to the next page, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm on page 22. And so there is a full page of language that was added regarding how to apply for these funds. And um, uh, there's also some reporting at the very bottom, provide bi-weekly updates to the General Assembly concerning implementation of this section. And Linda, you'll bring these to the attention of House Commerce and anyone in this committee, if you wanna weigh in, weigh in on with Linda. Um, so okay, we, then page, sorry. We can move on. Yep, to page 23, you'll see, this is where you're gonna see the 17 million for the additional UI uh, supplement. And the language states that it's, um, for not more than $100 per week for not more than five weeks to Vermonters who received unemployment insurance benefit pursuant to um, this pandemic unemployment assistance. Well, there's statute. This is directly right. related to the, um, the administration's request. And I think they requested 20 million here. Was it 18 or 20? They, they requested 20 to the CF, yes. the Joint Fiscal million. Committee. And, and this is, um, um, you, you will see that in the Senate proposal that they did not continue with the gift card that we heard testimony on Friday. And um, not that this is a one-off this for that or anything like that, that is not here, but this is the new piece that um, doing a supplement of the $100 additional UI. So um, can I ask a question? I'm sorry. Well, it, this, but they're they're using 17 million of crf funds for this this is all part of the 100 yeah yeah okay um obviously we'll work that out but they they we must be able to use that yeah mm -hmm. yep it's okay. part of the 100 million and mike's committee they'll work their priorities um and and we'll come up with a commerce package that the house and senate agree upon which also includes within the 100 million, the next page on 24 that Maria's already gone over, the 15 million of contingent grants if they become available, that would go back into the, uh, into the, the business grants if, if that money becomes available. So Linda, that's another commerce and that's part of the $100 million total package. Okay. It is Oops, um, yeah, go ahead, Marty. Marty? I just wanted to clarify this unemployment, the 17 million, it's not another 100 on top of the 300 that we already allowed. It's yes. 100 for those that are still on unemployment from September 27th to November 15th. Because that extra 300 has already expired. Remember, there was original the federal right. government had six hundred extra, and then that, that expired. went back to August, and right. then we yeah. we fell into the federal program for another three hundred for like three or four weeks. This is right. now one hundred 
for five weeks from September 27th onward to November. Thank you for so pointing that out. Somebody who's still on unemployment in October would get their regular unemployment plus 100. Right. Thank you. And, and the time period that I referenced was the August time period for the 300. And thank you. Um, this is for a different period of time. Excellent point. Right. Okay. I think then we can now move on to uh, telecommunications. And yeah, page 25. We've just, so we did that. The, yeah, okay, good. Thank you. Perfect. So what the Senate has done is they're, un, they're amending the underlying bill, Act 137, to, um, this has to do with the, with the question that was asked earlier about the, um, I guess nobody asked, I'm sorry, hot spots. Um, <laughs> oh God. Um, so originally the bill had uh, 50,000, 125,000 is being added here. And this is the issue of the Wi Fi hotspots. And um, let's see, I believe this money was moved from where the house had it. Um, so you're talking about number seven here because this is all black language above. Move down to 1105, Teresa, please. Are you talking about 1105? Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, I'm sorry. You you know, I shouldn't waste your time looking at language that you've already approved. That's okay. Um, yeah, I'm talking about 1105, the telecommunications plan. This is the question that was asked earlier about the CUDs. This is where that 1.5 was moved because it is, um, the idea was that it was more appropriately placed here in order to be eligible for CRF funds. So that was where I was, can I just, I'll just jump in because that's where I just want to flag that, yes. and Marty's on top of this because she's just on top, but this is where the polls, we had for the polls, and now there's, I don't know, I don't know how this impacts that construct that we had, but I also want to go back up to that line above it, B, B1105, we, that was our space in our bill that we took out from Mark Higley's amendment, the Senate puts this little repeal in and I went and looked that up and Marty, that was gonna be a question for you. This changes one of the items on the 10 year telecom plan that they have to include. And so that will be the flag question is like, what's the impact of them eliminating that from the telecom plan? They just repeal number seven. There's like a dozen of those. What was number seven, Diane? Do you have that? No, it's right there in front of you. I'm, see above, not, oh, I'm not right. B1105, when we look at our original bill, was the place where we had the $400,000 movement that we took out for Mark Higley, the rental assistance. So we had removed that. The Senate has used that spot for this new, yes. So they added this in that location yes. that repeals one of the many items that the 10 year telecom plan is supposed to include in their development. So Diane, went, we're going yep. to have Steve Klein jump in and explain this piece. Okay. But we don't okay. have to decide. I just wanted to let you know that yeah. it's there, that that could be a big question. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, just throw a couple of things out. Representative Lamper did catch a, a good point here. The telecom, telecom plan did have in there uh, the uh, looking at the issue of uh, the cuts and what the Senate said is, and the telecommunication plan is a long-term look. And the Senate said, well, we're giving them short-term money, a study to study the cuts, so we don't need to even look at them on a long-term basis. So it, that was sort of the tie the Senate made. It's a little, the Senate proposal is, uh, a short-term cut study and exchange that got rid of a long-term look. So it is definitely an issue that probably should be open. Um, the second one, just I just going to flag 11.05, 11.05.1. This was uh, there was a lot of questions about the polls and whether or not the polls would be eligible. And so what the Senate did, I think, in conversations with um, the chair, House Chair of uh, uh, Chair Brickland, Brickland is since there already was 800,000 going to fund um, this type of just general work, 
the proposal is to increase that to 2.3, add the 1.5 there. And since that's already underway and there's already some approval uh, mm -hmm. of that type of expenditure, it, that could cover polls. It could cover other things too. And so they lumped all that money into the sort of category of already approved things. It's not gonna be loved, I think, by the um, uh, Commissioner Tierney because it was hard to place the 800. Now they've got to place 2.3. But rather than go through a new process with a new program, it seems safer to put it through an existing process. The old program had a hundred thousand dollar cap. This one has a four hundred thousand dollar cap. So they can essentially provide the various recipients with more money uh, and get the money out um, quicker. And if polls can be made eligible, they could fund polls. Marty, do you have a question here or thoughts? Well, only I agree, and it's easier to throw it into an existing pot that was already uh, part of our June uh, calculations. And they did change the language a bit to accommodate that or to accommodate what the original idea was for a poll data survey and some pre-construction work perhaps. And the data, the language now says, talks about accelerating their deployment schedules and things like that, rather than specifically saying for a poll data survey. But indeed, it, it can, some of that work can be done early and be done before December. And by pulling it within that bigger pot to start with, it just makes it easier. And the CUDs can all turn around and apply again for that pot of money. And Marty, um, so I think it's fine. 1101A, have you, has Tim Briglin's committee weighed in on 1101A? 1101A, what's that? Where are we? 1105, I'm sorry, 1105, 1105.1. Where did I, I don't know where I came up with the other number. Uh, the, the, the part that we're going- uh, The 1105.1 is what we're talking about now. And yes, yes. they're aware of that. And have the 1105 been. that Diane just mentioned, I had missed that and I'm gonna do some checking on that one. Okay, so we'll leave that one open, but did they take a position on the new language and use um, the initiative to, for the polls within within this new construct? Have they weighed in on that? Did they work with uh, this, on this language? They have not officially weighed in on it, but I have informed Tim Berglund of all of the changes that, have, that occurred with their requests and I don't know that they're going to meet today, but he might take a straw poll on all those items and let us know. I don't see any, he didn't seem to think there were any complications. Okay. Um, then let's just leave them both open until you come back with us. And then at the very bottom on, on, on this new section is where you see the grant awards going from 100 to 400 that, that Steve had mentioned. So we'll hold that all open, Marty, until you've heard yes. the committee. Okay, thank you. Let's move to 1106, which brings us to page 27, I think, Teresa, Maria. Yeah, yes. Okay, so um, these, this section has to do with the 75 million that the administration had to allocate and the 150 million that the Joint Fiscal Committee um, had to allocate. And what's going on here, the black language already had um, 2,565,237 reverting from the administration's 75,000. So that was money that was reallocated in CRF. And if you go down, um, yeah, yes. So you'll see here that out of the 150 million joint fiscal committee money, 2 million is being reverted and reallocated. Okay. We, so had, we had 20 million. No, or the first or something, the first 20 million. The, the, yeah, you, you're right that um, we had assumed that there would be some FEMA money that could offset some of the some of the um, money that was allocated. This is different. This is a um, OK, so that issue we talked about earlier with the um, Senate is assuming 15 million that in their contingent money. But, but this, this is actually. Go ahead. This relates no. to page 24. It, this language relates back to, to 24 and you're right, Diane, we did do the 20 million we thought we would get from FEMA and they have done a whole different construct here and, and have just uh, zeroed in on- Right, not and, yeah, and 
their construct is sh short of ours by five million, and in their language, they only include taking it from the 150 and not from the 75 as well. They just take it from one side of. It's a, and you know, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> So up above in the language that the house passed, they are they're agreeing with the reversion of the 2.565 million from the 75 million to the administration. And then in addition to that, um, they're reverting 2 million. And you're right. I mean, if you look at the language that's crossed out, it said um, there is some house language that says the first 20 million reassigned, uh, it, it refers to the 20 million that you were just talking about. But this is, as the chair said, a different construct. Yeah, and in the end of where it is, it's five, five million sort of lost in this little shell. Okay, so when we go through and determine what we're going to do with the FEMA dollars and, and how much we can capture, what we're going to take from the, those two original plots that go through JFC, we will we'll, uh, decide if we agree or if we need to alter the, the two pages on page 24 and 27. Um, Linda, this is um, this is related to yours, but it's it, it because it's how we spent some of that uh, money out of the one hundred thousand. Um, but as a committee, we will determine what we're going to do there. But I think we can move on because that we're not going to make a decision on that now. Page twenty-eight is uh, uh, yeah. So. I think we can skip to page 29 because 28 is just all language that you already, okay, there we go. Boom, right there, Defender General. Um, the Defender General um, notified us that there was 300,000 CRF monies that they had been appropriated in Act 120, the quarter one bill. And those monies are not gonna be able to be used by the end of the year. Um, so those monies are being taken away here, and you'll see, I, you did see it actually on Friday that we, the Senate added general fund monies to replace this. Um, this was part of the general fund increase that they included for the Defender General. So this is the 453 is GF. No, 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 this is all coronavirus CRF money still, but I guess what I'm trying to say is that they said they aren't gonna be able to use the CRF monies between now and the end of the year. So what the Senate did was, they took a look at their need and, and backfilled with general funds. So you see that on the um, web report. I'll give you, on the web report, it's on B202 is where they increased it. Yeah, and they increased it by 375, but 300 right. of that 375 relates to this issue right here. Okay, but my question is, they are confident then they can get the 453 out by December 20th. That, that's what they've reported to us. They feel confident with that. Okay, so so if they're confident with that piece, but obviously then it leaves a hole and that's where the general fund piece will be, Diane says, is on B202. Yes. Um, we were aware of this issue, but it came just as we were bringing the, the bill to the floor. And so we did not have time to address it. Uh, Chip, you'll follow up on these pieces um, and then we're going to determine how we, how we find that general fund uh, depending on our priorities as well, if we choose to. Um, I can't see my green and my black with the light. I, I, can, I can look at the screen. Let's go down to B1108. Okay, so this language also refers to the 150 million that um, the Joint Fiscal Committee has to allocate. And what it's saying is that any money that's not used, um, let's see, um, shall revert to the CRF fund here in the middle sits. So okay. Um, unless otherwise authorized by the Commissioner of Finance, any monies appropriated from the CRF fund, whoops, um, shall revert to the CRF to the extent that they have been expended by, that they have not been expended by December 20th. So this is a, um, so that they can be reallocated. This is a lot of language to basically say that any money that's not spent of the 150 million is going to be reverted and reallocated. And I think that relates to the 15 million that um, that we talked about earlier. Well, my question no, is- No, this, this is all money. Not, this this is, is the new plan. This is their rewrite of our whole- if Okay, this, then all right. That. All right. Well, my, 
I just, my, yeah, it goes friend. on from page one, oh, well, in the other bill, so it my, goes on for many pages. And my, it's just rewritten everything that we did is not there. And this replaces it. I have no idea how it impacts the difference between what we did and what they're doing. I can just, uh, you know, it's worth, probably we'll go through it at some point with, um, you can go through with Jen. The main, there are really two changes they did. Most of them are technical. The only, um, they deleted the, in the, the way you would send over to the Senate, you had some specific priorities. Those specific priorities were taken out. Right. Um, and the, uh, right. there was a discussion in the Senate about, well, why aren't we prioritizing agriculture? Why aren't we prioritizing other things? So they just left the priorities you that put in about um, liabilities and revenue and took out the, the other direct priorities. And then they also took out a couple other paragraphs later on, which uh, were um, probably superfluous, but maybe not. You know, you can talk to Jen about, they weren't really substantive. It's more just repeating things that were in the law elsewhere. So I, I think you'll find the biggest change is the priority change of not putting, specifying what they are, but Jen should really go, could go through the technical, technical differences. I think there was some of them like they, wanted to clarify that it was money that hadn't been encumbered because if it's already encumbered, they didn't want to take it back. Uh, and a lot of smaller changes like that. There actually is an annotated version we can we can send you, I think, of this. My question, Steve, where's the language? Oh, we had a ton of language. Where's our deleted language? That's what I, because I wanted to compare. Um, yeah. Where is it? What, what section did they delete the language from? So, so it's I think the best thing I can do is send you, um, Jen did a, a, a copy with crossouts and deletion so that you could use that. The way this um, annotated version is set up, it just has the replacement language and has your language, I think, separate. But I will, I will check that. I think the most useful thing would be to give you a copy with the deletions. But if you know, but if you look on page 27, you see our language deleted on page 27. It has, yeah. it has the green line through language. You're right. But I guess what I'm saying is that they deleted the whole thing and substituted a new version, but the changes are pretty minimal. And so I want to get you a uh, uh, get you a, a copy that shows some of the technical changes so you can actually see the difference because it's very hard from because they, they substitute out a whole new version. Exactly. And that was my where I got with it, too. And I just printed theirs and put it in my book next to mine. And I thought we're going to deal with that one because that's a bigger issue. And if it was not so if it wasn't if it, if their changes didn't substantially change things, then why did they have to strike the whole thing and <laughs> rewrite it? Why didn't they just change the pieces that made some decent improvements by removing the word previously? You know, they so yeah. this is going to take a little more by somebody to dig into to make sure well, our priorities are we will, we will have Jen come in and walk through these cha these language changes with us so that we understand the technical pieces versus the substantive re uh, uh, pieces that may have been taken out. So that's going to uh, bring us all the way to 30, um, 33, I believe. Yeah, uh, so Steve, since you're on, um, section B1109, the contingency planning for increased CRF flexibility. Is this also something that Jen might want to go over or is this something? Yeah, I think what it was, um, and I, I'm trying to see if I find the document that uh, outlines all the changes, but she could go over all those sections because that, okay. uh, so that would be... basically worked it through. And I think you'll find uh, most of them are not um, substantive, but you'll, you'll need to go over with her. So Maria, if we're tracking, it's it's 1108, 1109, and 1110. We're going right. to continue on page yeah. 36 would be 1111. And, okay, and, perfect. And Carby come in and do all of those other pieces. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's go to page 36. Um, and um, these are, um, this is the education piece. Uh, no, 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 yeah. no. Um, this, the first piece would be, uh, 1111 is the extension of the application deadline for the $13 million that municipal grants. Um, read it this already. I have a we we talked about this and we have a we, we may have talked about this particular one. And I think, um, down the next section 1112. Before, before we continue on, I want to stay on the 1111 uh, number A. 
Uh, last week we talked about this and I believe that we had affirmation from our committee to move that date out to October 15. We had an email from the tax department. Is anybody else remembering this? Does anyone have an issue with moving this date out one month? If not, I think we checked that out. We'll come back to it. Okay, I don't okay. hear any, any opposition. Now let's move down to the pre-K. This is where they added money and shift. You're going to follow with the committee of jurisdiction. They moved our 32.5 or 34.5, 32.5 up to 53 million. Um, so I think, uh, Chip, you'll do that work. And uh, Maria, let's jump over to page 37. Okay, 37. Okay, yeah. so this also, okay, so they appropriated, so there was already an appropriation of 50 million in fiscal 20 and the, the 53 million is for 21 CRF funds. So you flip the page and you can see how that 53 million is spent on page 37. Um, they, uh, Teresa, I think, yeah, 37, yeah, right, perfect, okay. Except I want to just make sure the committee knows that we did 50 million in 2020, the 53 is in fiscal year 21. Correct. So it's not moving from 50 to 53, it's, it's an additional where we only did the 32 or 4.5. This is how they have allotted those 53 million. Go ahead, Maria. I keep, I'm sorry, I keep joking. Okay, no, no, it's, you know, here's the thing. I, I, I agree with you because this house language, it's not crossed out, so you can't see the difference. Um, but the first place that they added of the, um, let's see, of the 53 million, let's see, there was an addition to Efficiency Vermont. Um, let's see. Yeah, there it is. It's 2B, yeah, it's the bottom of the page. Um, so there's 7 million added there. And there's, um, but I can't, I don't have in front of me the number that the house, I believe there was an intermediate. Really? I can help with that if you, I only because yeah, I got, if you have was that, that number. Was, yeah, I do. Uh, so our original position, we had 11.5. Okay. Okay, eleven point five. Okay, so that makes sense. Thank yep. you. You're okay. welcome. Yeah, I can help. <laughs> See, um, yeah, okay, so they're actually two million dollars over this house. Okay, here. Um, I, I think you know our annotations. We just have to work with them a little bit more because this is a transition year for all of us for staff, and so we just gotta. Anyway, that's okay. So then down below for public schools. Um, where it says 41 million, now it's 88.3. Mm -hmm. That's an increase of 43 point, I'm sorry, 47.3 million. So um, if you right. add- From the, the governors, from the governors. From the governors, but see again, I don't have what the house number was, so- We, we had 68.4. Uh, okay. Chip, I think is trying to jump in here, Chip. Oh, okay. No. No, I, I was just gonna provide the number. We've already got them, so. Okay, thank you. Um, so 68.4, so if somebody does the quick math, we'll see the addition and it's all going to total up to- um, Yes, it's 19,900, 19.9 million. 19.9 million, okay. Yeah, over house. Yeah, I, I apologize for this. We should be able to see the house numbers as well as the governor's numbers, but okay. Um, so that's, so that's, okay. And then um, if we flip, let's see, if we flip to, so this is page Chip, Chip, you will work with the Committee of Jurisdiction about the 4 million of the remaining funds and how those are used. Yeah, that, that was in our, uh, our version, so that's not new. Yeah, this is difficult to read when it's all in green and it doesn't include Hours. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I really do agree with you here. You're, you're right on that. Um, so maybe what we need to do, and I'll sort through this, we need to show you the House numbers and then the change from the House to the Senate. This doesn't quite do that. Um, so my numbers aren't going to add up, but the next page on page 38, the independent schools, um, 
the governor had 1.5, the Senate now has 1.2. And if somebody has it in front of them, what the House had, does anybody know what the House number had been up there in the top of page 38? I don't think we had changed it. I think it Okay, was. okay, that's fine. So the, the Senate took out 300,000. And do you know, um, you, Maria, was that they didn't have, didn't think they would have the eligible costs or? So I don't know the answer to that, but I can certainly find out. Um, I'm sure that we have some background information on this. I bet it's in a memo somewhere. Um, That'd be great. Um, Steve, you don't know why this was done, do you? Okay. But I'm not sure what the, this refers to. Okay, on page 38 at the top, under yeah. two, it says approved independent schools. There is a reduction from 1.5 to um, 1.2 million. Right, yeah, that's because they, I guess they, they went and got all the applications for independent schools and it only totaled to slightly below 1.2 million. So they, and that's on a sheet that's on our website, a uh, spreadsheet that you can look at. Um, and so then, so they, all the, it seemed like all the grants went out and it came out to less than uh, 1.5. They just took the other 300,000 yeah. to the bottom line of, to, of the other schools programs. Right. That's why they reduced it. Mm -hmm. the, nice. the accounting and technical assistance, the AOE decided not to use it and put all that money into the general money for schools. So uh, again, that, that was part of it. And the schools could apply for accounting or technical assistance in their general request for assistance. So it just meant that AOE wasn't going to use that money. Um, so again, they, they um, freed that up to provide generally for schools because they were trying to get to the higher number that this things it actually no it's it's in the uh it's the first item in the senate um restatement collection if you want to pull it up Teresa. it's a gf i thought it was a cr no 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 it's the first item it's it from it's not today it was a couple days ago or three days ago i think it's a spreadsheet and the uh, uh let me i can pull up a link to it if you want but it's uh um if you go to the list of items in the joint fiscal website under Senate budget budget restatement, you'll go to the um, the first one on meaning the Latin, the earliest one of those is it's called K through 12 CRF estimates September 2020. And it's a spreadsheet. Are you finding it, Teresa? That, you're looking at the CR, the Senate proposal CRF. No, um, I will send it to you. Because uh, I don't. We don't your, oh, are you, K through 12 CRF estimates September? Yes. 20? Yes. I just found it. It was down way inside there. Oh, yeah. Okay. You hang on, and I'll put this up. Get a little bigger. <laughs> yeah, you'll need to make it a lot bigger. <laughs> this, and I don't really know if you want the committee wants. I can certainly go over this. The committee might want to. Please, this is a, yeah, a little um, bit of a long thing. I don't know if you want to do it Steve, now or later. Steve, I don't. I don't want to do this now. Okay. Um, yep. And I and I really want uh, Chip to follow this. Um, yeah. with so maybe I'll talk to Chip about it, and then we can go come back to you later. You can he can come back to you later. Okay. But anyway, at least you know it's there. That's great. And uh, Teresa, where is that? So I can have. So it's on the website, but I'll just send it to everybody and then you'll just have it. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to go back. Let me get rid of this. Hang on. There we go. Okay. And are we ready to move on? Yeah. Um, I have a question as we're scrolling down here in the next little, that section continues, the crossed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you add up all the differences from all the numbers that are crossed out and then look at the new numbers, all of these different sections add up to a $53 million increase. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, Maria, maybe I can ask you in this, um, 
where they've crossed that out, then they've added this new section, um, which talks about prorating if, if there are more ex, um, expenses than we have the funds for. So it says, uh, if the Appropriated Cares Act funding proves to be insufficient to cover all reimbursement requests, any costs for new pandemic expenses shall be fully, fully covered uh, to the extent the appropriate funds are available. Um, uh, how, at what point are they talking about new expenses? I mean, they're talking about those will be the ones that are prorated. So I think that this is a conversation that um, we need to have somebody that is more familiar with the subject walk you through. I, this, I just don't have the answer to that. Um, then we would have, um, Chip, who would you like to have in, or who do you well, want? I'll just, I'll just talk to Jim Demaray. Okay. Can, can I throw Chip? Can I ask you to take a look at one other thing? Because I didn't get into it, but I just flagged it on my notes. Is that that deletion of 1114 was in our bill the school year language, and they dropped that down to 115 or 1115? Well, but they what they of, they got rid of a section that we yeah have they got rid of they got rid of the Australian ballot thing and I have no idea why that would be the only question I would have like why why was that taken out because that the, you don't have to answer it is disagree yeah and so Chip you will um, work with the committee of jurisdiction on that and then uh, that may be a piece that that we have to work with that we would work with the Senate on probably and not House and Senate education. Yeah. All right, um, but let's see. So the, um, I'm having a really hard time in this room seeing what's green and what's black. Um, so D, we are, we, Jim is going to check in with Jim Demaray on D. Is number two above in black or green? I can't, I can't tell, I think it's black. So the next section that's green, I think, is B1113. Okay. And that's, yeah. and that's the uh, number that we already saw that was increased yes. by the $2 million. And that will be yes. a conversation that we will uh, determine if we agree or cannot agree on. Uh, 14 has been received, but we see it in 15. And then uh, Chip will... Uh, talk with the committee of jurisdiction or we're going to work with uh, the Australian ballot uh, piece and um, the importance of having or not having it here. And 116 is the next one, which is the waiver language. Has this changed from our house version? Uh, no, the, they kept all the stuff. They've added some new things. Once you get to 118, everything else is new but they kept the stuff that we had other than the Australian ballot. So we can check off 115 and we can check off 116 because it is our own and 117, we can That's also- That's the same, yeah. Okay. And then yeah. Uh, 118 is a new number and this has to do with ADMs. Uh, Chip, do you wanna talk about this piece? Well, um, only that there's, I think everybody agrees that there's a need for it. Um, I think this is where our, the House Committee uh, wants to go too. But uh, like I say, all this stuff from here on is, and I haven't, they're meeting, they're meeting to discuss it tomorrow and I'll be there tomorrow, but I haven't talked to the chair about where they are on these new sections. Okay. So uh, just 118 uh, chip and then uh, 119 is new and is 119 new? Yes. Yes, yes. it is. And 120? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then how much further, Chip? Uh, the tax for after school. Yeah. And 120, 1112.1. 1. 1. That's oh, new. That's a huge new piece. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And that's going to bring us all the way over to 46. So kidding. That is the wrestling papers. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yes. I just for Chip, obviously one of the questions for education is how are they going to do all of this in the time period and what's it going to cost, et cetera, et cetera. 
I mean, this is pretty massive stuff they dropped in. Okay, Chip, you will take all. Mary, do you have another question? Your hand went back up. Or comment? No. Um, it's a, that's a big piece of policy, uh, uh, Chip, and perhaps they have taken testimony on this and they're uh, ready to accept or come back with some changes to it, or it may be too much to do at this point, but you'll have those conversations with the committee. Yeah. Okay, are you good there? A lot of pieces, Chip. Um, let's move to page 1121. Yeah, section 1121.2. So this section was, we're shifting to a new subject, um, the healthcare stabilization grant program. And here there's $25 million that um, is being freed up um, from the Agency of Human Services. And the, there's a couple of things I wanna point out here. When the when you, when the House passed their bill, you had, there were two expenses that you had. One was the DAs and SSAs for uh, 3 million. And the other was the long-term care, I'm sorry. The other one was the Vermont Health Equity and that was a million dollars. So those two items, as we progress through this section, you're gonna see that they're incorporated into this um, money for the um, Healthcare Provider Stabilization Grant Program. Okay, so I just want to give you a heads up because there's a lot of moving pieces throughout this budget and these are two of them. So first, there's a free up of 25 million from the healthcare provider stabilization grant program. And I think Steve might be able to comment on why that occurred. Um, but if you want to keep moving, we can also keep moving. <laughs> um, no, if you look um, at the bottom of page, 47. Well, at the, on page 47, there's number four, that was a million dollars in our construct. Yeah, so on page 47, this is where you're going to see a few different things. First, you see the um, EMS workers that that um, two million dollars is number one that see that's two million. And then uh, okay. number two, okay. Okay, then number two is the is three million dollars for the um, testing in hospitals, and I don't believe that the house had that in their numbers. Uh, wait, let me see. I'm sorry, I don't believe they did. Um, we did not, but we okay. did. Have, we did have the next three million, but we had it. Yes, we did. So they're taking this out of the the two hundred and fifty. That's right. That's correct. Okay. So this money for the DAs and SSAs is being folded into this pot of money. And then as the chair mentioned, the one at the bottom, the 750 was a million in the house. And so it's 750 now and it's being folded into this bigger pot of money. Okay. okay. And then the 2 million, the first one, that's the EMS piece. Yes. Okay. And so Dave and Mary, you both have some, some pieces in here um, uh, within uh, to work with yep. the committee across the hall. Uh, first of all, um, you know, we're moving yes. 75 to 250, but within that 250 that we passed back in June, um, that, you know, would we include the, relating te the related testing, the EMS workers, and then we had agreed to 3 million going to the DAs and SSAs but not, you know, we hadn't put it out of this pot. And then uh, the healthcare um, equity, I believe that um, the new executive director weighed in on this language and, in, and weighed in on that amount to see why they went from 1 million to uh, 750 if it covers what they feel the need is, if the committee across the hall agrees or disagrees with the language. And that, brings us through 48 into the top of page 49. Correct. Uh, yes. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, Dave or Mary, any questions on those pieces? They're, they're similar money. There's some additions and it's coming from an existing 
uh, an existing pot of money instead of um, new CRF? I, I don't have any questions. I know that with the $100,000 that they're giving to the Director of Racial Equity to set up a dashboard, I have a hard time thinking that that can happen in the period of time here, but we'll sort it through. That's a new thing. I don't think we'd seen that before. And, Maybe I'm wrong. And so I Mary? Mm -hmm. uh, Go ahead, Dave. Uh, Dave here. So I don't wanna duplicate anybody's work. I've been emailing the director on this issue. So want me, do you want me to run with that one, Mary, or do you want it? You've got it. Okay, uh, I'll work on that. And, and I'll work on the $750,000 one. The other one you mentioned EMS, that's Peter's, I believe. Did you mention? And then, or am I uh, just? Uh, Peter, are you with us yet? Peter was away. I don't know if he's yes, back I'm, with us. Yes, I've been here. I have been here for the past, I don't know, 20 minutes. I okay. haven't done EMS this year. I mean, I can certainly jump in, try to figure out what's going on with it, but I haven't done it. Nor have I. Ahead, <laughs> Peter. Peter, since you're trying to go ahead. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Okay, and then the testing in hospitals and long-term facilities. Um, if it's the testing piece, um, Peter, do you do 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 you or Dave want to follow up on the testing piece? Uh, it's part of the healthcare testing. I'm assuming would come out of the health department, but um, yep. yeah. But so I can I I'll follow up with that. Um, I again, all they did was they reoriented the money from. Uh, from a uh, direct CRF appropriation and put it into the healthcare stabilization uh, CRF appropriation. So, uh, but I will, uh, I'll run that to ground with the healthcare committee. And Mary, yours is the same amount of money, but from an existing source that you'll weigh in on. And Dave, you said you would do the 750, which brings us to the top of page 49, including yep. the board piece, but you're already talking to the uh, executive director. Thank you. Yes. Okay, let's move to, um, Maria, let's move to page okay. 59. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking that this was a, an amendment or because it wasn't in my the version of the bill that we talked about on Friday, like my hard copy, but let's just go through it. Okay, so the first change in this section um, is, you can see the money, they added $22 million in sub two, and then the change that is being highlighted on the screen is Wait, they include. Is this it, is this new from Friday? I'm, I'm yeah, I I I believe it is. And Steve, do you can you just say whether or not this was added on the floor? Is it in? It wasn't in my version on that I worked from Friday, but it is today. So I'm something happened between the two. Okay, can time. You um, yeah, I can check I on actually, that. I actually don't know. Okay, um, I'll, I'll check on that. Just, just but, to, Teresa, can you move the screen up so I can see uh, after E on reports that where we left off, I'm wanting to see there. this is all new. Yes, what they have done is they've put the whole frontline hazard pay bill, they've dropped the hazard pay bill into the yes. budget. And that's what this is. And um, go up one more, Teresa, so I can see a little bit more. Stop mm -hmm. right there. Okay, so go down a little bit more. I wish I could. Okay, yeah. so, right here. so they've added a new section, uh, section B1121.1, and this is all hazard pay. So we are not going to go through all of these pieces. Uh, okay. They have dropped their original hazard pay. We know we did an, a, a different hazard pay on Friday. We made some changes to it, but I would like to drop all the way down to section B1122 now, because I think that that's okay. hazard pay here, Teresa. Can we keep going down? Penny, I didn't hear what section you want to go to. I want to go to section B1122, I think. I, I just want to yes, make sure. Do. That is what you want. This is all the hazard pay. This is going to take up a lot of those new pages. Um, 
that Diane referred to instead of 161, it's 178. And here's a bunch of them. It's the entire hazard pay bill. Good, correct. That's so the next section that is We're being getting... scrolled down to is 1122, and that's also a bill that okay. um Go back to the top of 1122 because this is new language too. We're still not at, we're not at. Oh, a page because I'm getting lost here. Uh, I am too. Craziness huh. here. I can't. Okay. Um, let me, let me see if I, I've got it online. Let me just see if I can find exactly where it starts. Teresa, There's go some... back to 1122 when you see B1122 stop. Okay, that's what we're looking for. Okay. 1122 okay. Is, is the stimulant equity. Right. <laughs> what page is it on? Just a second. Just a second. I think it's page 59. We're going the wrong way. Yeah, the other way. The other way then. 59? Yeah. 59. 59. Oh, okay. Somebody told me to go backwards. So that's where I, I thought you'd gone ahead of it. Uh, okay. This is more hazard pay. There it is. Yeah. Yes. Oh, no, we don't. Keep going. See, it's, it's even Stop. further. Here Stop. we go. Stop right there. Page six. This yeah, this is new language too. And then down below it, um, stop right there. Stop, don't, don't go, uh, 11, 22. All of this is new language that we did not have. No, right. yeah. Yeah, point four, okay. point three, I'm, point four. The, so, the difference is this is where we amended it to add in um, our language about the hub. Remember that small piece? It would show up under B here. Yeah. Okay. 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 I gotta get a new copy of this because it's really hard when you don't have. So, okay, Kim let's... Kimberly, let's... is anything else new here, or is that that's the that's the only one that I saw that was new there? Because we okay. had only done a very. Yeah. Actually, no. I stand corrected. Uh, remember, we also expanded uh, with more precision how to describe child care programs. So that paragraph B was different in the House version. Okay, so we need more work on it. So Kimberly, I've got a quick question for you. This is language that we had in in ours, but I am not seeing it in the in in yesterday in our, our copy from Thursday. I go right to 11.22 for- It's not there, it's not there. So they have dropped all of this in to so, the language. I think, well, Madam Chair, the B11.21.2.2 B and 0.4 are all new that they dropped in on Friday. Yes, That's right. Sure. So it's not just that one uh, paragraph, that's a change, but it's been dropped into the budget. Um, right. So when we worked on S232 on the floor, those changes, whether it's the Till Amendment, whether it's what we did in the House um, Appropriations Committee around hubs, none of that is captured here. No. And I don't, we don't know if they, they tried to, do, do we? No, well, the, the, no, the they, timing they, was off. No, not Sorry. just their timing was off. I believe that they agree that their, that their position is their hazard pay as it passed the Senate. Um, and not ours. Yeah, and, and maybe they will agree to incorporate some of the pieces that we're, that we're passing. But my question is, this piece that has to do with DCF is not part of the hazard pay bill, is it? Or is this? It, I yeah. can't, can you scroll up, Teresa, a little bit so I can see where this stop right there? Child care, summer camps, after school programs, section 14. I don't do we don't have this piece. Right. That's why I can't find it. This is yeah. new. This is all new language. Yes, it is all new. It's not in the bill that we had on Friday. And it doesn't hazard pay it's not part of the hazard pay piece well it does in b it says a prospective workforce stabilization program um but that's the same me... thing that's the same thing perspective workforce stabilization program is the renamed piece yeah. that what 
the Senate used to call hazard pay. If you recall, mm -hmm. there was the That's error correct. made in which amendment apparently and it should be prospective workforce stabilization, so that's correct. And then this, the tweaks that we made in our committee. Okay, so Kimberly, you are going to follow up on 1121.4. Let's go back to 1121.3. I just wanna make sure we're following up with 1121.3, yeah. delegation of administrative responsibilities, human services name. Yeah, hazard, Correct hazard pay. Okay, yeah. that is hazard pay, but it's within human services, Kimberly. So I want you to continue with that language with point three, and now let's go to point two. Um, the other hazard pay is all Linda, but point two is with former employees. Uh, Linda, this is going to be part of the other hazard pay up above. This is an addition. Okay. So Linda, you have uh, point one and point two. Kimberly, you have point three and point four. Okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. Now let's move on and see what the next section is after 1121.4, if there's anything else added. So I think that's go, it. You want to go up more? I keep going down to 1121.4 and see. That's the last thing. If that's the last thing, then it should be 1122 that's next. Keep going. Right. Kimberly's got this piece. Okay. Keep going. There. Okay, now we're back. So all of that other is all new added language and this is where we've left off. Um, yes. Marty? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Marty? To scroll down through this section on the equity program, they included children under 18. Oh, it's on page 62. Yeah, I noticed as that. As opposed to 17. Yep. I thought the Senate approved our bill, but didn't they act on our bill? Well, you know, if they're under seven, if they're under 18, ours in, oh no, ours are. Yeah. Under Can we make an amendment to go under 18? That yes, we move so. from 17 to 18? No, no, no. We, no. They, they, we went back the other way. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It the would have opened. Bill had seventeen. <laughs> That's right. And it would I have thought, opened up. I thought the Senate have... approved it. Uh, Steve, do you happen? Did you follow any of the Senate discussions? If they made a conscious decision to go back to the under eighteen date versus the seventeen, after all the things that we learned. Um, and how it was going to complicate. Are you there, Steve? I know, Maria, you weren't listening to those because you were with us. No, I wasn't listening, but you know, I'm going to find out for you. Um, Adam, I you. Adam has his hand up and he okay. may have been listening to those conversations. Adam? Yeah, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, good morning, everyone. That <clears throat> was a, an error when okay. they lifted it from um, you know one page into another, we pointed that out that, and um, Michael O'Grady um, and Stephanie spoke, and it was simply an error that okay. um, should be worked out in some amendment or in conference committee. If you go to conference committee, the like, it was not done inadvertently. It was an inadvertent error. Okay, and and so at this time, the the Senate is not planning to take the bill up separately as we had passed. They're just going to drop it in the budget and not take it up. Adam, do you happen? That was the, I believe that was the intent. You'll have to check okay. that, but I believe that was the intent. But the 17 year old to 18, that was an error that they meant to stay with the house language. <laughs> and, and so Marty, after that, I believe all the pieces are, are the same. Until the appropriation. Um, and yeah. Uh, it's uh, uh, oh, they, they do a different construct for the appropriation, correct? Yeah, yeah, but the total is the same. It's five million. Um, so this, Adam, Adam, we absolutely thank you for that information and knew you. Were but Marty, just for that we cross all of our uh, T's and dot our I's, will you just also check with Michael Grady that that's in error? Not that I don't trust you, Adam. No, 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 that's fine. Maybe I should. Do that, probably not, Marty. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you're right. That was your bill, Chip. I, that was your parting gift. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Chip, I'll forward to you an email uh, between Michael O'Grady and me. 
And then let's go now to the appropriation piece. Okay, as noted um, by the chair, they have a different construct. The total is $5 million. The house had put 2 million general funds and 3 million from reallocated money from the Chins bill. The Senate has taken 2 million general funds and $3 million from the human service caseload reserve. So Maria, just yes. because we're scrolling through at the same time and I want all members to be able to follow the page number where it shows that construct is on. It's on page 67. So we have to jump way ahead. Oh, okay, so there you are, bingo, right there. I'm sorry, I thought you were there. Okay, so on page 67, um, which is totally different from my pages now, that's not going to yes. work. Um, uh, let right. Me uh, so on your, on your document, it's probably page at the bottom of 54, in the old document from Friday. Okay. So um, I think that we can, uh, 122, we can check off because that language is, and the skip is all set with the 15. I mean, uh, the age of 17, we can check off 122. It's our bill. It's 123 where you're going to find the difference in me. Now go ahead, Teresa. Um, Maria. I'm sorry. Okay, so let me just put okay there. All right, so now. Aren't we going to have an amendment to it possibly on the 17? We don't have any amendment. We're going to make the changes in the budget. And budget. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we just talked about the appropriation. Oh, Diane, you are absolutely right. It all depends if we do further amendment or if we do a conference committee. So I, I had conference committees in my head. There would be no amendment. It's just working out the differences. But if we do further amendment, that's one we need. To Thank or, you. Or just, you know, I just know that that's something we potentially going to, Chip's going to come back with. Yeah. But it depends on which method we do we have to do put it part of a technical or whether it's um just in conflict go ahead maria on okay, okay so we just talked about the this section here this is the appropriation that is different source of funds in the house than in the senate as you recall the governor had two million general funds that two million is used in both the house and senate construct the house used three million of the chins money from back in 2018 special session that was appropriated and the Senate used, instead of chins, they used the health care, uh, I'm sorry, human service um, caseload reserve funds. So that is going to be a conversation that our committee has if we want to use human services caseload uh, funds or if we want to use the chins money. Um, and I just, go ahead. I just want to make a note that as we go through this language, you're going to see some language on how they use the chins money. So they, they've accommodated, they've used that money, but we'll see that in a bit. Okay. And I don't have, I don't have uh, this bill in front of me when we did the stimulus equity bill, but a uh, section A is the, the 5,000 and then up to 50,000 for administration. That has not changed. Is that correct? That's correct. So what you see in this language is, um, they're calling it 5 million general funds. And that's because in section in the B, sub B, they take 3 million and they unreserve it from the human services caseload reserve and it gets put into the general fund. And so in A, they appropriate the full 5 million from the general fund. Okay. Which includes the governors too that he um, identified. Yes. Marty? Exactly. Marty? Or Mary, who had their hand up? Mary, uh, I think and that we said in A that the we named the director of racial equality in A, okay. rather than just the set, the agency of administration. So I think that is different yeah. from what we said. We named her earlier in the bill, but I don't. Yeah. Not here. Yeah, this is just for. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. I just didn't want to lose that piece. The so chips got it. Thanks. It's yeah. on. It's on. Um, small letter C one. The program shall be administered by A of A, 
in consultation with the ED of racial equality and the Agency of Human Services was asked to weigh in. So those three pieces are in there. Uh, Marty? No. Nope, okay. All right, Chip, so you have this and then our committee will decide um, on where the $3 million is appropriated from. Let's move on. I'm hoping it's 1124. Yeah, it is. Okay, so um, this is, this is an amendment to the, um, it changes the deadline for the um, agricultural CRF assistance programs. And if you recall in the House S-351, well, it was the House and Senate, it became Act um, 138 um, for the dairy assistance program. The deadline had been October 1 for, uh, applying and the deadline has been changed in this bill to November 15th, 2020. And you can see that, yeah, right there. We'll come back to this as a committee and Chip, you'll run flag that by the committee of jurisdiction, the deadline. Okay, let's move on. So the, um, the a lot of this language and, and, you know, I might need to find out if there are other nuances, but a lot of this language has to do with the date change and um, specifying instead of referring to funds, they say Corona relief funds. Um, and they, so you know what, there's a few different language changes here. And um, if you need detailed information, I can get it for you. I just don't have it right. In front and of I think uh, Chip, you'll be able to run these through with Michael Gray and the, uh, if there's, um, something hidden within, I don't, you know, the status of the dairy assistance program and taking that out in non-dairy and just going back to the ERF assistance programs. Uh, it appears to be just tidying up the language on those sections, but Chip, you will work through those. And I, I want to move to 1126. Um, yeah, I'll come back to you. There is that one piece of language that's in front of, you can see that up to $2 million. We, I just need to follow up and find out what what's happening there um but okay so now section b 1126 um let's see chip will follow up on the two minutes. okay this is all part of it okay yep fine it's all about the funds not being used revert um okay all new language yeah this is this is all new language this is all new chip you you've got all of these pieces yeah, to work with. yeah. Okay, so let's, um, I think this now brings us all the way to section D100. Okay, so D100 is, that's the um, property transfer tax. And let me see, that's on page, um, oh, let me see, I'm looking. Um, I've got a question. There's no C sections, right? We didn't, we don't need any C sections. None, yeah. I mean, that's interesting. I noticed that the other day too, no C sections. Okay, so now D100, um, this is all property transfer tax. This has to do with the VHCB change or not? And they took out, okay, so you did, you do see that um, strike out. The administration, when they gave us this bill, they had a notation in there um, referencing the one time 3% reduction to the base appropriation. And the Senate just struck that language. Is that for VHCB? Yes. Yes, it is. And so they reinstated, oh, they reinstated the 3%? Um, no, I think they're just not, yeah. no, no. I think what they're doing is they're just not including that reference in the language. They're just not saying, yeah. Okay. they're just not referring to it. Didn't, didn't, we, didn't we want- We took we, it out. Or we put it in saying, we just wanted to make sure that that 3% haircut that they have doesn't become a base uh, cut. Okay, so I might be wrong on this. I thought that you were never wrong, Marie. Right. You're never wrong. Oh You're... no, oh my God. Don't okay. say that. <laughs> no, I, okay, so in any case, it was at one point it was in the bill and now it's being taken out. How's that? I remember the conversation. We had a conversation around this that we really wanted to identify that these were a one time three percent. But if you think we we kind of uh, have VHCB, where we also see this 3% uh, 
across many other areas, and I don't believe we've been consistent with the language throughout the bill. Um, and so we may choose. That's right. It was added by the House. You're right. Yeah, that we was... added that piece. Yes. Um, yep. But but we only did it for this one piece. We didn't do it for the arts or for any of those other sections where we saw those, the the uh, three percent. And then you also see up. I'm sorry. Oh, second, Mayor, uh, Maria Chip has a quick question. Well, um, so I, all that sounds familiar, but the language doesn't work as it is if we just strike that out, does it? Because it says that that appropriation, that amount reflects the 1.5 million reduction and a one-time 3% reduction. So if that was accurate before, if you take that, that out there, the language doesn't work, does it? Well, the 3% the reduction is there even if it's not in the language. Right. We just right. wanted to uh, emphasize it was one time in nature. We didn't yeah, I, I understand that. What I'm saying is the language that we had said the appropriation of 10 million five hundred eighty dot 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 reflects the $1.5 million reduction and a one-time 3% reduction. So if you strike out a one-time 3% reduction, that number, um, 10 million, 10.5 million, is probably not accurate anymore. Right. We're still doing the three percent reduction. We were the three percent reduction is still happening, whether the language is there or not. I get it, and and I won't press it any further. I just don't either. The language was misleading before, I think, or is inaccurate now. Um, but that's as long as the numbers work out at the end of the day. So I I think that a uh, one point that could be made here is that we not withstand the underlying formula every year, and so. The amount that they get can vary from year to year, right? The 10.58. But the 1.5 million language has been in there for several years just because that's the amount of money that's being used to pay off the housing bond. And so we wanted everybody to be really clear on, on that particular piece of it. And I, I do understand what you're, okay. you're making. Maria, we're, we're, we're not withstanding the base every year. So the three exactly really kind of perfect that's that's exactly what i'm trying to say um but then i want to point out that you did add that phrase and the addition of a hundred thousand to support the cost of technical assistance for writing grants so that that is that remains here okay mary you had a, a question or comment I, a comment i i notwithstanding that we not withstand every year that phrase either you either have to say the 1.5 and one time three percent reduction or you take out both portions of that phrase for that to be a logical statement that's, um, what, that's what chip was saying i'm just saying it in a different way okay hey dave this is your section and i want you to work on how that should be and and talk with Mary, talk with uh, Chip, and and just figure out which pieces have to be reflected or not reflected. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Mary, I didn't mean to shut that down. I just want to move on. This I think Sorry. we'll talk forever about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's keep going, and I think we can go quite a section now. Uh, Maria, where's the next piece? So, so on page, um, oh yeah, yeah, there's just a really small technical change. Let me see. Um, on page 77, um, I think this was part of the governor's uh, technical amendments, maybe not, but it's just yeah, the words following and being was they were added. Um, just makes it easier to read. Yeah. So I think those are just technical, unless you want to spend more time on it, we can so, uh, close it. Uh, let's, let's close those off unless there's questions. But what section, can you tell me the section number so I can, uh, what section? Uh, okay, that is section, yikes. Can you go back up on, so I can find the section number? D, D, it's part of D101 and then A, let's see, A. Okay. 
They're both technical. Yeah. That's all. That's just yes. close enough then. Yes. Yep. It it's page 64 on your document. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Yep. There it is. Okay, let's just check all of those off. And 102, there was nothing. So the next section that there is something in. Okay, it's the next section. Um, Teresa is page 82. Um, um, the transportation piece. Okay. Yes, that is. Yeah. What's that about? Okay, that's a good question. Excellent question. Um, I have to. I don't know the answer to that. I'm just going to have to to get it for you. That's all right. I just I just flagged it too. I had no idea. I was like, yeah. Well, that's yeah, I have that flagged as well. I should have asked that before today. But. Okay, so we'll leave uh, that open and Bob, that is part of Bob's transportation. Yeah, you're going to follow up on that. I'm going, yes, yes, I will follow up. The next um, change, um, Teresa is on page 84. This is also a technical change. Um, we had a, yeah, oh, there. There, that just wasn't necessary. That um, second title, because we're already referencing the the um, statute that's being just. It just wasn't. We just didn't need that green part, so it's being taken out. Okay, right. uh, Bob has a his hand up. Bob, I got a kind of a question. <clears throat> I've been over on the bill in my email. And when I'm on Zoom doing that, do you know I'm here? I mean, do, does my picture show up? That's Can a great question, Bob. I was wondering well, yeah, that. Yeah. We see you now, Bob. Well, I was talking with you folks, but there was about 100 other people talking, and nobody acknowledged me. I said, well, maybe they don't know I'm here. But so I just like to know if you reviewed. know that I'm here when I'm really here and may not know that I'm not here. Now we know you're here. We see your sweet smiling face. But I'm going back to the email. You're going back to where? His email. I go to my email to read the to follow the bill through. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but we still you know you're here. It just I can go back and read emails too, and I can see that you're still here. You can see that I'm still here when I'm reading my, not my but email. He, yeah, it is an email. Yeah. Yeah. So I can click off, and and I've been reading, going back and reading emails and stuff as we're on here. You can still see me. It's only. Can you, you hear me? Actually, uh, so not if you're on mute. So you want to make sure you're always on mute. So if you're on right. mute. And you may want to take your video off. Take your and video it, off, yeah. And it, and it keeps you as a placeholder here, but you can uh, be doing what, you, what else you need to be doing as well. Okay. Yep. Good. I'm going back to my email. See ya. <laughs> I'll be on. So let's go to the next one, which is B100.2. Yes. yes. Okay. So on page 85. And um, this is just a technical amendment. This was the position pilot language. So we needed to do, you know, we had to put the whole string of times that we've um, amended this language. So this truly is a technical amendment and uh, okay, that's Mary, all I have to say. Can you hear that, Mary? Um, so our, we're missing the date that the pilot expires, which is fine by me, but we had a date certain in there and I don't see it now, Maria. Um, okay, so there, there, July 1, 2021. Oh, oh I looked right here. It, it's, it it's, never mind. Yeah, no, it's, you know what? Sometimes this language is it's just a lot, you know, there's a lot of it. Let's just say yep. that. Yep, thanks. Okay. Okay, so okay. we can check off. That's a technical change, E100.2. We can check off. And I would like to do, um, I would like to stop right here and take a quick five to 10 minute break um, if the committee doesn't mind and we'll pick up with tax. And, um, and all the, 
Thank you, Madam Chair, because the next six of them are all my budgets. <laughs> okay, uh, let's take a five or 10 minute break. What time is it? It is 11. Uh, let's come back at 11. Is 1110 enough or do you want 1115? 1115. 15. 11.15. Okay, I'll see you all at 11.15. Okay, I'm going to stop live and we'll go back on when you come back.